Today in Apple Motion, we're gonna create this fully custom sidebar. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this project and use it inside of Final Cut Pro right now. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. From there, select the Final Cut title as we wanna apply this as a title in Final Cut Pro. I recommend you leave your presets at 1080p with a frame rate of 2997 and a duration of 10 seconds. Go ahead and push open. Then from there, select the type text here layer and push delete. Firstly, I'm just gonna bring in a video file here so you can see exactly what this effect is doing, but you do not need to follow that step. Now that we have this video file in, the first thing we wanna do is replicate this background so that it's actually extended out on the sides. That's because when we go to move this over to the side, you'll notice how everything is completely black. So to achieve that, go ahead and select this group and I'll just rename this to be background. From there, we'll go over to the inspector and find this fixed resolution option under the group tab. Go ahead and enable that. By default, if this is a 1080p project, it's going to be 1920 by 1080. We need to extend this out to a 4K project. So go ahead and set this to 3840 by 2160. And it should be noted that if you're in a 4K project, you're just gonna wanna double those numbers. So you'd wanna double 3840 and 2160 to be twice as large. If I zoom out here in the viewer, you'll notice how our bounding box has been extended well beyond the borders. Unfortunately, if I move this, we'll still have this black edge. So to fix that, we'll go up to our filters, go down to tiling and select collide a tile. After that, we'll find the width and height options. Go ahead and set this to be 1920 by 1080, or if this is a 4K project, 3840 by 2160. If we move the background, you'll notice that all of my edges have been extended. Now, occasionally when you do this, you will see a seam here on the edge. So if you have that issue, go ahead and select your collider tile and change it over to 1918 by 1078. This is just gonna subtract a few pixels and will totally cover up any of those seams that you might have. We now have this extended background object. Let's go ahead and collapse it just for right now. After that, we can right click and select a new group. Let's call this group the position group. With our position group selected, go down and select the rectangle tool and create a perfect rectangle by holding down shift. After that, we can go over to the far left side and find our properties and locate the position setting. Click on this down arrow to the right and select reset parameter so it is directly in the center. We can select our background and locate the position parameter. What we wanna do is link the position of this background to that rectangle. So to achieve that, we can go ahead and find this down arrow next to the position parameter, select add parameter behavior, then select link. After that, we'll go ahead and just drag in the rectangle. So now that we've done that, if we move this rectangle around, you'll notice how my background image is moving. But there's a really powerful tool found within this link parameter that we're gonna use to our advantage. Selecting the link parameter, if we scroll down, currently it is set to mix over time under custom mix. And you'll notice I can adjust the slider here. But what we want is to actually change it from custom mix over to ease in and out. Now it has this mix time range. Why this is so powerful is if I drag this rectangle over to the right hand side, you'll notice that the background did not move. However, if I move forward 10 frames, now the background moves over to that rectangle. So it eases in slowly to that final position. If we go ahead and select that link parameter, I'm gonna change the mix time from 10 frames over to 30 frames. So again, if I push play, you'll see how the animation is really smooth. But what's crazy powerful about this is now at the very end of the video, you'll notice how it slowly moves back to its original position. This allows you to have a perfectly seamless effect on your videos. So we can actually hide this rectangle for right now so that the position is just being applied to our video, but we do not see that rectangle. Let's go ahead and create our last group, which is the sidebar. From here, I'll right click and select new group. Let's name this to be the sidebar group. And we can push command and left bracket to drop it down in the layer stack so that it is underneath our position parameters. With the sidebar selected, go down and find the Bezier tool. You can create the sidebar to be any shape you like. I happen to like how this looks just by creating a dot here at the top and then we'll kind of do a sharp angle down to the bottom left. And then I'm gonna give myself a whole bunch of space over here on the left hand side and I'm gonna hold shift so that it is a perfectly straight line. We can go up to the top and then we can just finally complete the shape by clicking on that last connection point. Go on to the left hand side and find your shape settings. 
In here, we can go ahead and disable the outline. With our fill, let's change the color over to gradient. Now, under our gradient settings, we can apply whatever color that we like. And to adjust this gradient, we can click down on this tool and find the adjust item tool. Now you'll see these on-screen controls to adjust the gradient. Go ahead and click and drag to adjust that gradient to your liking. Once you've got the gradient set up how you like it, it will be important to be able to change this color later on in Final Cut Pro. So to achieve that, you might expect you would have to click on a down arrow here next to the gradient. But what was shown to me by an incredible viewer is that instead you'll need to right click on the gradient and then select publish and now all of your gradient parameters will show up in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this gradient for right now. With that gradient applied, select your Bezier and go on up to filters, go down to border, and then select the stroke filter. That will give us this nice little red stroke. We'll go ahead and increase the width on that and change the color to our liking. But the reason why I wanna use the stroke filter rather than the regular outline is it's very simple to apply a gradient to it, or we can also select the offset options. I happen to like how it looks to have this little gap between the stroke and our main object. Now, I actually want to have two strokes, so to achieve that, we'll just select this main stroke and push Command D, which will duplicate that stroke and give us our secondary stroke here on the outside. So we now have this basic sidebar in position. What we need to do is link it to that original rectangle we set up for the position. So I'm going to rename this group to be sidebar. Then I'm going to collapse it and push command left bracket to drop that in the layer stack. With the sidebar selected, we can go to the properties and locate the position parameter. We'll click on this down arrow, add parameter behavior, then select link. From there, we'll go ahead and expand our position and find the rectangle. Click and drag that rectangle into position. And already you'll see that our sidebar is now moving way over there to the right hand side. However, it is going to be at a constant state and we want it to slowly animate into that position. So to achieve that, we'll again change it from custom mix over to ease in and out. After that, we can change this over to 30 frames. So now it should have that nice slow animation to that final position. Let's move back to the very first frame and then select our sidebar parameter and locate the position. In here, we can go ahead and adjust this X value all the way until our sidebar is completely off the screen. What that has done is it allows us to now fully animate this sidebar into position, but we won't see it from the very beginning, which really adds to the animation. So if I push play, it animates in perfectly just like so. Now, let's say you're working with a different piece of footage and you don't want the sidebar to be quite so far over to the right hand side. Go ahead and select that link parameter and find this X offset. We can click and drag on this X offset to adjust where the sidebar is. I'm gonna go ahead and click directly on this number value and drag that down to get a very fine tuned amount where I want the end position to be. Also, it will be very important to adjust this parameter later on in Final Cut Pro. So we can right click on the X offset and select publish. So now we can fine tune this to the perfect position over in Final Cut. Now that we have this basic sidebar animation, we need to add in our titles. So selecting the sidebar group, go ahead and get your text tool and quickly create whatever titles you want to have on screen. With that all typed out, we can go ahead and click and drag it into position. Again, make sure it's inside of the sidebar group so that your animation applies that we made earlier. We'll go ahead and adjust this title into our final position until we're happy. This is looking pretty good. And it should be noted that you'll be able to adjust this later on inside of Final Cut Pro. One other thing we could do is go ahead and jump inside of the appearance settings and we'll scroll down and add a drop shadow to this text so that it really pops off of that sidebar. So we now have this sidebar in position, but I wanna add just a little bit more visual flair to this text as it writes on. So let's go ahead and go up to our behaviors, select text basic, then select arrange in. And now you'll see that the letters are actually animating in as it slides onto the screen. I want it to happen just a little bit later so we can really see the animation happen. So we'll select this main layer and then drag it over in our timeline so that it happens just a little bit later. One other thing that'll be really important is we need to tell motion where the end of this intro animation is so that it always keeps that timing intact. If we don't do that, it's going to stretch out this animation over the duration of our project, thus making it really, really slow in Final Cut Pro, 
or way too fast depending on how long our title is in Final Cut Pro. So to do that, go ahead and find the end of the animation, then push Shift M to add a marker at the top. Double click on that marker and change the type from standard over to build in optional. After that, scroll over to the last second of our project, push Shift M to add one more marker, and we'll change this over to build out optional. So now all the animations will be applied appropriately inside of Final Cut Pro. One other really important factor in Final Cut Pro is having on-screen controls so you can very quickly manage your templates on your timeline. So to achieve that, we'll go on over to our library, go down to our generators and locate this color solid. I'm going to apply that inside of our positions group. From there, we can disable the color solid for right now. Then we can go up to filters, go down to distortion and then select black hole. That is going to give me this on-screen control right here. And if we go over to our inspector on the left-hand side, you'll locate this publish OSC checkbox. Go ahead and enable that. And what this will do is push it over into Final Cut Pro so we have complete control over the position of this handle. However, you'll notice that it is not affecting anything within our scene. What we want it to affect is our rectangle that we added earlier. So to achieve that, we'll select this rectangle, go over to the property settings, we'll expand the position and locate this Y value, which we can set down to zero. Then from there, we'll locate the X value and we can right click on it, select add parameter behavior, then select link. From there, we can click and drag this color solid into this well. Now it's looking at the source parameter from this color solid that we added and it's applying the position of that color solid, which is not what we want. What we want is the effect we applied to apply to the X value of this rectangle. So to achieve that, we'll change under compatible parameters. We'll locate the filters, which is that black hole we added. We'll go to the black hole and find the center value. From there, we'll just select X. So now the X value of that black hole will be driving the position of our rectangle. However, if we take a look at our rectangle, you'll notice how it's jutting over way over here to the right hand side. That is because our black hole has this offset parameter that we need to fix. If we take a look at the center value, it says zero by zero. But if we expand that, you'll notice in here it says 0.5. So we need to subtract that 0.5 value to get the rectangle locked directly onto the black hole effect. So to achieve that, we'll go into our link settings and find this X offset. In here, we'll just type in negative 0.5 and now the rectangle will be wherever this black hole effect is. So if I go ahead and click and drag this over to the right hand side, you'll notice how everything slides over to the right or if we go to the left hand side, everything slides to the left. So this is going to give us complete control over how much of the screen is overtaken with our sidebar, which is really valuable. So now if we push play, the animation will play into that perfect position, just like we set up previously. Go ahead and slide the position roughly into place wherever you want this to be by default. Then from there, it's gonna be important to go into each of the different parameters. So for example, this Bezier, we could go to the shape settings and make sure you publish stuff like the color. Also make sure you expand that Bezier line and publish the stroke color here. So we can right click on the color, select publish, and we'll do that on the secondary line there. You could even publish the stroke type if you wanted underneath these color parameters. And more importantly, we'll wanna go into the link values and find this X offset, which we can right click and make sure that that is published so that in Final Cut Pro, we can offset the sidebar to our liking. So once you are content with having published everything you could possibly need, all you will do is push Command S to save it or to publish it over to Final Cut Pro. From there, we can just call this the sidebar effect. We can jump into our categories and scroll all the way down to the bottom and locate under tutorials or wherever you wanna throw this, and then I'll push publish. Now, if we go over into Final Cut Pro, I can locate under my titles. We can scroll down to the tutorials category and locate my sidebar, which I can click and drag down onto the timeline. And if I push play, you'll notice how everything slides over to the right hand side very nicely. If I really shorten down this title, you'll notice how it pops into place and then it slides out really smoothly. Additionally, if we select that title and go into our title parameter settings, we can go ahead and we can click and drag our text around as needed, or we can use this on-screen control to slide it over to the left or to the right. You'll notice we can change all of the text here in Final Cut Pro, just like we would with any other title. And additionally, we can change all of the colors. We can enable if it has a build-in or build-out animation, and we can adjust this offset 
so that it is in the proper position for whatever we want to show on the right hand side. If this video was helpful to you in any way, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget if you're a patron, you can go and download this right now to use within your videos. I'll also have a few extra settings for you to use to make your life that much easier. If you want to learn even more about Apple Motion, I highly recommend you check out this video where I show you 10 powerful tips for Apple Motion that you absolutely need to know. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.